So basically, Agile is the most complex one uh, that is going to use in the day to day, uh, in your day to day activity in your corporate life. So it is very important. It is also asked in every, each and every interview for software testing, whether it is manual or automation. Okay. Okay. So today we will proceed further with the testing within within a life cycle model test level. So that is nothing but a software testing life cycle. So it is again a cycle which is similar to software development life cycle STLC. But this one is spec is specifically for testing. So like the uh, like for development, uh, we did a requirement analysis, then we did a planning. In the same manner, these steps will be there for testing only for texting activities. So the first one will be a requirement analysis this, and it will be go one by one in the testing phase. So if you talk about this particular model, here we have testing in waterfall model. In V model, we, here we have testing in iterative this particular phase is testing and in a child this particular phase is testing so stlc will be applicable only till this particular phase hope it is clear okay so when when the testing fails phase will start we will do the t whole testing team will do the requirement analysis then they will do the test planning. Then they will develop the test case. Developing the test case means writing on Excel or if you are in automation, writing the code for the automation. So this is the this is what test case development means. Then we set up the environment. Setting, setting up environment means uh, which kind of environment the application needs to be tested on. So whether it is, let's say, there are multiple type of testing, uh, which we'll see. So if this is the the testing needs to be done on a dev environment, then we will choose the dev environment. If it is staging or SIT or the real testing environment, then we will do a setup to to like we will make a platform ready with all the configuration to perform the testing. Okay, it will include everything like on which system we need to perform, whether it is Windows or Mac, which browser we need to include, whether it is Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Opera, Microsoft Edge. Those things will be set it up here and we will proceed further with the execution. So once we have our environment, uh, which will be the configuration of these things, which will we, we talked a, a while ago like system, browsers, environments, production environment, staging environment. After that, we will execute our test case. So which means, environment.
Uh, is it clear? Yeah. Okay. No, it's. Uh, did you say something? I, your mic was muted. Okay. I. Okay. So basically, uh, I was explaining system and environment setup. So let's say I have to. There are two conditions that I need to run this particular test case. This one, the first test case, to val validate the uh, login screen whether it, it, it takes me to the dashboard or not. Then in that case, uh, the first environment is I have to run on Windows platform. And in that, I have to use Firefox browser. Okay, so those things will be arranged. If it is required to be run on uh, a Mac device or, or an Apple device, then in that case, I will uh, do a setup on Apple machine and I will install Safari browser and then I will test it. So before executing like here I am providing the input which means I am executing doing the execution. I have opened this particular URL and I am putting the username and password which means I am on this particular stage for Windows environment. Similarly there will be another environment in which you have to do the same thing on Mac machine or Linux machine depending upon the requirement so this is what environment setup means so basically it is a uh, act activity in which we configure the devices on which we have to perform our test execution okay so test execution means again uh, running the script uh, like whatever it is mentioned here it, he, here it says navigate to this particular URL, enter the username, username, enter the password, click on login button. So this, this is a part of execution. All the UI steps that you will do on a browser, that will be part of execution. Clear? Yeah. After that, we have a test closer. When all the activities, testing, testing activities are done, well, all when all the functional requirement are met, we will close the test. This is nothing but the exit criteria that we have seen in previous lesson. Okay. okay. Let's see one by one in detail. So, STLC stands for Software Testing Lifecycle. The pro the procedure of software testing is also known as software testing lifecycle, which includes different phases of testing processes. The testing process is executed in a well-planned and systematic manner. All activities are done to improve the quality of the software product. So the main agenda of software testing lifecycle is to deliver a quality product to the customer. There are different phases of STLC. The first one is requirement analysis. Here, requirement analysis uh, is the first step of software testing. In this phase, quality assurance team understands the requirement, like what is to be tested. Like quality uh, assurance team means there will be QA manager, QA lead, and they will do a meeting, and they will decide what uh, needs to be tested for based on the priority of the delivery so here uh, we review the software requirement specification document that is nothing but the SRS document and all other related document that is required and associated with the project okay so uh, in addition to that we will also do some uh, meeting with the stakeholders stakeholders means the scrum or the product owner which in case of agile or in in rest of the case we will do the meeting with the customer to gather additional information like if anything missing from srs document we'll note it down and we will do we will ask those questions from the customer in that particular meeting okay we identify uh the we identifying if any requirement is missing or incomplete so based like what happens in real time business analyst people will make the SRS document high level management people and here we do the verification like we did in the V model 
right so we verify so we verify whether any requirement is missing or not or it is incomplete further steps needed to be added to achieve it completely we also identify the potential risk and issues that can impact the testing process okay here we create requirement traceability matrix here it is again a very important interview question they will ask uh, what is requirement traceability matrix so here uh, you you can note it down uh, there there is a proper definition for it so it is a matrix matrix means <coughs> uh don't worry i will give it for now let's let's understand so here it is a matrix it is let's say a table where they they map each requirement to test cases so for example here let's say my requirement is to reach on the login page so this is the test case one okay so here I, the requirement says i should log uh land on the dashboard page no i i should have this login success message and i should land on personal de detail page so this is one requirement and it has been mapped with test case 1 so this particular requirement is associated with test case 1 similarly there are certain some more requirements let's say verify you use ess user is able to edit personal detail or not so this is the in uh, requirement in which we have to check whether the ess user is able to edit the personal details so this has been tagged with the another test case so all the requirements here requirement traceability matrix what it will do it will give you an overview visualization by going through it you can understand whether all the requirements are covered in the test cases that has been written or not that are going to be created right so how this particular test case has been written like who uh, here we have give me a moment here we have made a separate test case test case 7 for to check this particular requirement user is able to edit the personal details so that particular thing will be planned here in the in the requirement analysis only so this this thing will be planned in the requirement traceability matrix here let's say there are seven requirements so we will divide let's say here we have eight doc eight requirements so we will divide and map these eight requirements to these eight test cases that's it so that when it when uh, in future we want to check whether all requirements has been covered in the test cases or not we can directly refer to the matrix and get to know that test case a is is reference to uh, this particular functionality requirement user cannot edit restricted fields okay so he here it is requirement it is mapped to test case number eight so that is nothing but the matrix where so here we map the requirements to the test cases yes. okay clear requirement analysis it is similar yes. if you can if you relate it and understand it will be more easy then we have test planning so it is the most efficient phase of the software testing life cycle where all testing plan plans are defined in this phase uh, manager of te testing team calculates the estimation of cost and effort of the testing work so here cost means the budget and effort means the resources how many people are going to be required to achieve our target to achieve all the requirements so here what we do we identify the testing objectivity uh, objectives and scope testing objective means again 
it should uh, fulfill all the requirements right so it, it should uh, it, we should make a plan and we should identify what should be the objective so whether as per customer requirement they want 95 percent uh, critical requirements to be full fulfilled then that will be my objective like 90 i have to fulfill i have to completely test 95 percent of critical functionality after that uh, we will identify the testing environment and resource needed so testing environment again uh, like the application uh, needs to be run or used in mac os or windows os so everything will be identified here and accordingly we will assign some resources we will also assign some uh, resources like how, what should be the count of people who should be working on window uh, windows environment and who should be working for the mac os environment identifying the test cases that that will be executed and the test data that will be used so here which test case requires to be executed in the first go so here as you can see in the first row we have logged in uh, login feature so here we are testing the login feature and validating whether it is taking me to the personal details page or not so depending up upon the fun uh, priority the test case will be uh, depending upon the uh, priority it will be marked p1 p2 p3 so when the tester will start working they will pick it accordingly hope it is clear so in planning we identify we marked certain test case that this particular scenario should be uh, executed in first go so we, we will mark that particular requirement with p1 and at the same time we uh, we collect the data we accommodate and can, can uh, collect the data that is that that is going to be used in the test cases so here we we decided that the login feature should be executed in at in the first row and for that this data we have seen in in previous session what is what is test data data here it is what whatever the extra data that we are going to be used in our project that is test data so here we are using username and name and password so that is the test data for test case one so this particular uh, point wants to state uh, states that here we identify which test which scenario which requirement should be executed at first and what should be the test data that is going to be utilized in that particular test case so here login feature will be executed at first and this is the test data that is needed the username and password for this particular requirement if it is confusing please let me know it's almost uh, similar everything is almost similar like yes yes everything is similar yeah, yeah. Similar. The, the, everything like uh, this is designed in, in, in such a way that uh, if you understand SDLC thoroughly, SDLC is very SDLC is very easy, and it is like it is just there for to make you understand. It is not uh, it don't have much value in terms of interview. They will ask you very rare. The, they they will ask you like what is unit testing, component testing, what is what are the different types of testing. They will ask you. But for examination, they will ask each and everything. Okay. So we, here we assign roles. After that, uh, we assign roles and responsibility to the team. So there will be certain group of testers, senior testers, and uh, test lead and QA manager. So QA manager will assign certain uh, modules for 
testing to the different team so let's say i have three modules so the first module all three will be uh, assigned to the test lead and he will further segregate it to senior tester and uh, test test associate and junior testers so depending upon the criticality the senior tester will be assigned with, with the critical uh, module then the test analyst will be assigned with the less critical moderate one and the junior tester will be given uh, assigned with the least uh, severe crit least critical functionality to test hope you, hope it is clear so depending upon the experience they will assign you the task after that uh, re reviewing and approving the test plan once all these those things will be uh, planned they will create a document called test plan where they will mention everything that is going to happen in the testing and they will review it and get it approved from the product owner and scrum in the in if it if the company is using agile model or if it is using other models they will validate it from customer okay then we have test case development in this case testing team notes down the detailed test case like they will write it in the excel format if they are using manual so there is one catch here whether you are using a uh, you, whether you are doing manual testing or automation testing these test cases should be written and if you are manual tester uh, in most of the time you will be writing the excel sheet test cases and sharing it with the automation team and they will write the code following this particular excel sheet only okay so the next point is writing test cases that are clear concise and easy to understand again it should be written that everyone anyone uh, can understand by going through the test case at once so like here we have what is the test case number what is the module what is the requirement id based on the priority we will assign the requirement id what is the scenario so here everything is in crisp and clear format right I anyone can read it and understand what mm -hmm. is what needs to be done so it should should be created in that particular manner only okay creating test data and test scenarios that will be used so here in the planning stage they decided that for this particular uh, requirement what need what data they need so they need username and password but the value is the real test data that will be created in this particular phase so they will as they will say that uh, they will decide how should be the username so it should be a combination of a, a capital letter and small letter then we have special character and digits so everything uh, will be decided here okay then we have again we will review the test case after writing it and we will get it validated with qa manager once qa manager approves those things that it is we are good to go then we will proceed further so before executing it what we'll do we will do a environment setup environment setup again we'll we will set up all the hardware and software needed to perform testing if it is windows and software we will arrange the machines and we will get we will get everything uh, so that ready so that we can proceed further with the execution so once everything is validated by the qa manager we will do an environment setup after that we will execute our test case so in test execution uh, after the test case development and test environment setup test execution phase gets started 
in this phase testing team start executing the test cases based on the prepared test case in the earlier step so here we have developed it and here we will execute it okay so here test execution uh, we will do test execution test analysis test reporting and defect login if there is any so like here we analyzed and found that user displayed with the dashboard page it should have landed me to the personal detail piece but in actual uh, in actual scenario actual result is it is taking me to the dashboard page so what is uh, we have we are we have analyzed we and after analysis we found that this particular test case has failed so after failing it we will take some screenshot we will create a report we have seen a report right if you remember and if it is a bug like if it is a bug then we will report it i'm not sure whether uh, defect tracking is there in this particular syllabus or not let me just check it again no it is not there again it is an important thing uh please remind me at the end i will cover it defect logging okay. how to, how to do that okay any question yeah. after that we have test closure so once our test case is, is passed we will proceed further to close that particular test case so test closure is the final test of software testing life cycle where all testing related activities are com completed reporting is completed which which is mean which means that it is documented uh, then we can proceed further with the closing of that particular test case the main objective of test closure stage is to ensure that all testing related activities has been completed and that software is ready to re release in the further environment so i have tested all these test cases that are required to be tested if they are passed i will make uh, i will attach the report i will make a document that each and every test case is completely successful after documenting it if there are no work left i will follow the mm -hmm. exit criteria if you remember from the previous session following which we will decide that we are good to close the testing or not so once we are good to uh, good to uh, te close the testing we will push we will uh, give a message to the whole team that the product is bug free we are good to go uh, to release it in the further environment to deploy it mainly okay so this is all about stlc any question in that uh, exit criteria no there is that um, test uh, la poor lack of uh, test coverage mm -hmm. there is one uh, lack of can you repeat that again like other topics is clear than that the lack of test coverage is little uh, bit confusing okay. so it will be in other module i think first module first module previous one okay so there are functional coverages so what hap uh, what happens there are functionality customer will define that so basically we will uh, not take any decision based on on one point we have to consider all each and every point that is mentioned here okay so test coverage is we have certain functionality let's say my project have 100 functionality 
like here uh, we where is that Let's assume that these are the functionality of our project. Okay. And in let's assume this that our project has only one functionality that, that is admin. And in that we have subsections. These are the sub functionality. So let's consider that this is this all has been completely tested and developed properly. This is the testing of this particular subsection is partial. Okay, we have done it till module only. Okay, and in that case, if my budget is about to expire, my deadline is about to end, and at present, my pass rate is at 95%. Then considering all the points that is written here, we will stop testing. We will calculate if the coverage is 95%, test coverage is more than 95% or exact 95%, then we are good to go. If there are certain modules which are very critical, Let's say register OAuth client. So if that is very critical, we will continue with the testing. We'll, we cannot stop it. In that case, the budget or the deadline will be pushed. Like the budget will be increased to certain amount. And the deadline, let's say the deadline was for tomorrow. Then it will be pushed for 30th September. Okay. So basically, this is a test coverage. There are... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So we have completed almost 7 functionality. Only in uh, in configuration subsection, there are 3 functionality which are left. If, if they are not critical, then we can good to go. We can stop testing. If they are critical, then we cannot do that. So... This is the test coverage. Let's assume till module we have covered and it is fulfilling the 95% of the functionality. So let's, uh, if it is not clear, let's say currently we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. Let's assume that we have 10 functionality. Okay. Till maintaining. Because I am taking 10. that it, Then it will be easy to understand. I have completed admin. Until directory. I have completed everything. Okay. Maintenance. Uh, how, what, what will be the 95% out of 10? 9.5. Right? What? Like 95% uh, uh, out of 10 functionality, how, how much how, how much it will be? 9.5 Okay, 9.5. 9 so, I have completed admin module, PI module, leave module, time module, requirement, my info, performance, dashboard, directory, but only in, maintenance in, in maintenance, what happened? Only purge page records subsection is full completed. Access record is not completed. Okay. So since till here we have achieved 95% test coverage. We have tested everything. Only this particular subsection is not tested. It is not of high criticality. It is not going to affect a major business problem. Then we can stop it. Hope it is clear now. This test coverage means like covering all the test cases we have used. Like no, no. most priority, uh, yeah. depending upon the priority, we are uh, testing. Mm -hmm. So when it is, when yeah. the testing of those 95% important test cases done, 
we can go ahead with the closer okay okay after that it is ready to release so those thing uh, like test exit criteria like you cannot only consider this one this particular topic you should be considering each and everything like p1 will which uh, should not be there defect rate rate fall behind the acceptance rate rate only 5% test cases budget deadline everything you should you should consider anyway uh, you will be not doing these things these will be done by the higher management all the decision making okay any question any for any more question oh. Oh. okay then we have a uh, component testing so before understanding what is component testing we should uh, we will go further with the unit testing so unit testing i have share, i have explained what is unit testing could you please tell me testing we are testing the smallest uh, code like uh, unit by unit we have to test it. the smallest code we have to test and uh, each com uh, like your uh, combination of units are called as component so if we complete one unit and then we go to the uh, next unit like small unit by unit uh no no uh, it is slightly there is a slight confusion between that so unit testing is the smallest portion of code right cool. yeah that that testing is the smallest portion no. uh, that is called unit testing so it also depends upon project to project if the smallest portion of code is considered as module so let's say this is admin here we have six subsection in case of maintenance i had only two subsection and if there are not much uh, coding required then this particular maintenance can be called as module which will be uh, included in unit testing so if the functionality is not very big then that yes. can that can be considered as a small portion of code and since this particular module have only two subsections so the, depending upon the project size the module size it can be also termed as a module since admin admin sec admin module have many subsection and inside that you have multiple functionality in each and every subsection so here what will happen here you cannot consider it as a module or it like if you have written your user management you, if you have written uh, code for user management that will be tested first okay so depending upon project and modules you define the definition of unit and module okay it is it is in terms of module with respect to the code and with respect to the whole project modules are different okay